and forging those relationships. And so we've created this time for you today to uh, talk with some of our leaders. So I'd like to bring out Mr. Scott Rowe and Michael Huggins. Come on out and lead the way, my friends. Hey, everybody. Look at Michael. He looks so good, man. <laughs> hey, you're looking good, too. How are you? So pretty, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying, you know, I was trying to start my Tennessee beard. <laughs> it took me a minute. I see Clark's got a good beard going on. What's up, everybody? Clark's doing it. I look more like Skylar today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, I had a quarantine beard for about six months, and it just grew out of control. Couldn't even fit on the screen, so I had to get rid of it. <laughs> well, cool. Um, well, thanks cool for... experience. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Well, uh, for all of you who are just joining us, I see we've got more people just jumping on as we speak. That's awesome. What I wanted to do is just create a, a space where I could quickly share my story and get uh, more acquainted with the rest of you so you know what power this community has to offer and, and what kind of transformation could potentially take place if you're willing to work. And if you've just been invited to this to hear a little bit about who we are and what we do, well, uh, I'm a auto mechanic and a dishwasher turned real estate investor. So I just wanted to share real quick my background um, and, and what's happened for me. So about, actually it was exactly 10 years ago this month that I answered a little ad about a real estate investing community. I had no idea that they were even such a thing. I'd read a few books on real estate investing and I'd seen the infomercials about, you know, buy this packet here or this boot camp there. And I was uh, always too broke to be able to do that, but I could get the books. And I wanted a big change because at that time I was living in my girlfriend's mom's basement as a college graduate, which is not an impressive place to live. And, uh, you know, my mom was paying my cell phone bill because I was so broke that if, if she wasn't paying that, I wasn't going to have one and she wanted to be able to check in on me. So it, I was a financial mess. I was actually so broke that uh, when it came time to eat, I was, I was literally eating one meal a day because I wanted to make sure I could pay the, the other bills and the student loans and keep everything else up. The stress was killing me. I was working 70 hours a week. Uh, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, also had a job and we would seriously spend maybe one to two hours a week with each other. And uh, that's not cool with the person you love, your favorite person on the whole planet, only one hour a week because you're trying to work these jobs and provide a lifestyle. And so uh, it was a mess. When I answered that ad and, and this lady named Jody said, hey, well, why don't you come meet our team? And I was like, there's a team I could meet? Um, I, I borrowed a car to get there. I came to the event and I saw that people were making more money in a month than I was making all year at my job. And they were smiling. They were happy. They were willing to share the information that they had. They were very welcoming. And I never met people who made a lot of money that were also really nice. I always thought that they, that was the opposite. And this community of people just embraced me. I told them where I was, the mess I was in. And they said, okay, well, if you're willing to work, we're willing to help you. So I got involved. I started showing up as often as I could. Within nine months, I completed my first short sale transaction. And that deal put $21,000 profit into our pockets. And that was enough for me to be able to quit my first job. In those nine months, I had learned how to keep a pipeline full of deals. And so the next month we closed another one. I quit my second job. The next month we closed another one and I started paying back some debt, which really feels awesome to do more than just the minimum payment. And, uh, and now I've been able to do wholesaling, fix and flips, short sales, uh, rentals, lease options, some land development. Now we're getting into short-term rentals. And it's just been an exciting adventure. Um, my best month ever was $84,000 in one month. Now, that was a lot of work and a lot of organization to, to make that all happen. But the thing I want to emphasize here is that the community resources that I was uh, introduced to absolutely blew my mind. And uh, the kind of people that really care about your outcome and your results made me want to keep introducing new people to the program. So I got a cousin involved. I got an uncle involved. I got my mom involved. Even my grandma 
is taking some tax strategy classes because she feels like she's paying too much taxes in her in her retirement ages. So uh, that's what I wanted to share. Obviously, there's there's more uh, when we hang around the campfire. You get to hear the longer version of it. But that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And I'm going to now turn it over to my buddy Scott over in Chicago. Thank you. What for snapper? He's awesome. <laughs> I remember when he was 22 years old and uh, he, I think you grew a big beard to do that first deal. Like he had this huge beard he grew out. Yeah. As I'm, as a, as I'm like, I'm not going to shave until I do a deal. And this, <laughs> yeah. we, all knew, we all knew when he completed that deal, that uh, young Michael there. And he's not bad. I mean, He's only 32 years old today, right? Are you 32? That's right. 10 years. He just celebrated 10 years working with the group, and uh, he's sitting on 265 acres in Tennessee. That's right. Yep, we just closed last week on another 10. There you go. All right. You got big plans. If you hang out with Michael Huggins, you're going to see – you're going you're gonna to start thinking way bigger if you hang out with Michael. All right, so our goal with this, um, you know, last week we, uh, we kind of talked about uh, – we were on the pack call with um, – Bob Snyder, for you guys that don't understand what the pack call is, you will if you start with us. And uh, what, what Bob did, he did an exercise where we actually told all of our, um, our stories. And um, he says, you know what, that's cool. So Michael contacted me and says, hey, why don't we do that on a daily basis? I'm like, sounds good. So we are lined up for tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday to do a one o'clock uh, where we pull two of the, um, the folks that have done some stuff that we know. Uh, out onto these calls so that you can hear their stories. Uh, we, in, we, we encourage you to put anybody that you want to hear our stories on, guests, people in a group, maybe somebody in this group that um, could use, uh, uh, you know, that, that uh, maybe run into a, a wall or a rut, doesn't matter. Uh, anybody on your team around the country or somebody that you invited to this whole group, this real estate investing group nationwide, worldwide, I see Anthony Maladon. Um, and our intention is just to say, hey, here's some folks that started just like you did, and here's what they were able to do. So let me tell my story. I actually uh, started back in 2005. There was a major shift in my life. Um, I had worked since I was right out of college. I was a sales rep. I became a sales trainer in a company, uh, became a sales manager in a company. I, got, I became a, a regional director in that company. I became a VP in that company. It was very performance-based. Um, and unfortunately, it was about product. We were moving product straight to businesses and straight to people, anybody that would look at it. Uh, unfortunately, the first hiccup that that company uh, encountered was big box stores like Costco and Sam's Club. And then the second hiccup that took it out was the digital space, right? So you could buy stuff cheaper online than you could get sold by a human. I, at that point, was in charge of four states, uh, 22 managers that had crews going out every single day showing off product. And they're like, hey, guys, we have reached the end of this row. Uh, you know, uh, technology change has made it so we can't do business the way we're used to doing business. And it was, you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just a paradigm shift in technology. Well, my wife and I met in that company. So she was taking care of uh, the warehouses that I was in charge of. I was taking care of the people that were using those warehouses and going out and getting a business. And it was over. It was all over. We did try a stint where... Um, I was in charge of a delivery book situation for them, but way less. We went from 212, I went from $212,000 a year down to you know, like 53 grand. And we realized that, you know what? We thought, we used to think big. Uh, we lost our, our ability to pay for a place downtown and a place in South Beach. We couldn't do that anymore. We're renting a situation in Naperville, Illinois. And, you know, things were tough because we're like, how do we, how do we build this back? How do we get back? And we had no idea until my wife, and I, I had an idea. I'm like, why don't we do properties? I'd met some folks that had done properties before. Um, this young man that had rental properties. I'm like, I came home. I'm like, hey, why don't we just we'll get rental properties? And she's like, we don't have no clue on how to do that. So fortunately for me and her, uh, she saw a roadside sign, an absolute, you know, corrugated stick thing in the, in the grass. She drove by. She came in. She's like, I saw a sign. And I'm like, from God? And she's like, no, there's a guy out there that wants to, to help you learn real estate investing. And there's, I, I, I guess you could get paid or something. I'm like, oh, you mean the handwritten magic marker sign by the gas station? She's like, yes, you saw it too? I'm like, I did. And if that guy can afford to pay me anything, how come he doesn't have a sign on 294, big shot real estate investor guy? And her answer was, I don't know. So she called the sign and uh, 
a young lady invited her down to the meeting. My wife came in to the house that day. She's like, hey, I've got a meeting set up for us to go and hang out. And I'm like, you mean you? I'm not going to nothing. And she's like, well, you're not going to go. I'm like, I'm not going anything. And now they're the credit cards. Keep those at home. So she went down to this meeting and, uh, you know, she came home excited, even more excited than the sign. And, you know, when your wife's excited about something and you want to stay married, what do you do? You go shopping. So I went down to the meeting and I sat in the front row. I was not a nice guy. I was stiff arming people. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how you want to stay away from all the happy people a little bit because they're too happy. They drank all the Kool-Aid. So I sat in the front row because that's where I sit. And I had my arms crossed and I, I, you know, I was glaring at the public speaker going, trying to screw him up a little bit. Like, what did you sell my wife? And, you know, she sat next to me. And um, the meeting was good. It made a lot of sense to me. Obviously, they, they had some... Uh, um, fantastic content in it. So I couldn't argue with what they were saying. It was all obvious. Um, I did meet a nurse in the, uh, in the group that had 12 properties, Denise Rybell. I met a firefighter named Steve Saul at 14 properties, an XR teacher that had 22 properties uh, that night. Um, and I thought to myself, well, these are, these are uh, middle-class folks that are doing the things that I actually brought to my wife. Let's buy some properties. And they're doing it, right? I had no clue where to start. I was just like, let's yeah, let's swing it. And um, they said, oh no, there's, you know, there's, I, I, I had to look at properties. I had to go through law of ashes. I'm talking to these people. It gave me a sense that, you know what? I should probably plug and play. So uh, there was two components to this situation. One where we could learn how to do real estate investing progressively. So wherever you started, if you got no money or credit, which was us, then we started wholesaling, which we started doing. And then um, we, did, we worked on short sales, even because it was a crash 08, shooting fish in a barrel. We learned how to do that, help some families out, um, did our first fix and flip in Streamwood, Illinois, and uh, we we're just rolling. There was one component, though, um, in the meeting itself. Uh, they said, hey, is there anybody here that's looking to uh, earn money? And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm here, earn money. No, no, we're talking while you learn. I'm like, yeah, let me talk to you about that. So I did get with the guy uh, in the front of the room and he, ex and I was blown away. He's explaining to me, I'm like, that exists here? All right, so I want to do that too. So fortunately for us, uh, there was a way that we could start making money while we were learning the real estate investing, which meant that because of the two ideas, uh, my wife and I have never needed a job since we went down to that meeting. Uh, even though our resumes were on the internet, I even told her after they got done explaining that to me, I'm like, you know what? I mean, I, I like the fact that they're doing real estate, um, but I thought we'd still need a job. I think if we can make this whole idea of the money earning, they, they pay us for helping them, them expand. I think we could parlay that into income now while we're learning so we don't need to fight traffic ever. And it worked out. So the plan worked out. We, we, uh, my wife and I hit it hard. We worked six days a week just to pull ourselves out. But today we have... We've helped 15,000 plus people get started since we started. And um, we, you know, we run webinars every single day to help people. We have weekly situations where we help people. We got monthly situations where we help people. And all this help is different. So the daily help looks different than the weekly help. And the weekly help looks different than the monthly help. Um, attached to uh, the education company, which is um, uh, very high, highly rated. I mean, I checked that out as far as, you know, checking out the, uh, the, the, or the, the BBBs and stuff. Anyway, the point is my wife and I, we used to go to work every single day and we'd fight traffic and we'd go to work and we'd deal with life like, oh God, getting road rage and we'd come home from road rage and we would talk about people. And I don't know if you guys deal with this, it might sound bad, but you know, when you're dealing with people on a daily basis every single day and there's politics at the job and stuff, you come home going, oh, you're not gonna believe what happened today. And the, the, the conversations were around dragging ourselves through this thing till we're 65 years old. Um, today, the conversations about people are different. Hey, did you hear Umar's picking up a, a, he picked up a trailer park? Did you hear Michael Huggins got 265 acres in Tennessee? Did you hear uh, Scott, Scott Loader's working on his, uh, his next fix? He's fix and flip madman. Did you hear uh, Randy Perler's got nine fix and flips going on at the same time? So today it's more of a celebration of people versus, oh my God, I gotta go see those people again. So it's been great. And uh, the only thing I can say is probably if you're on here for the first time or you aren't started with this group, um, I'm not a real people person. I'm more of an executive where like, I'll tell you, let's get going and get done. I, th this has been great for me because it gave me a chance to set goals. It gave me a chance to actually um, 
you know, get information, use it on projects and helping other people. It gave me a chance to create the lifestyle I want. I really hate, now that I hate, I hate fighting traffic, now I know. You know, I wake up in the mornings, I get on a webinar, I'm hanging out with the crew all over the country. It's been great daily. Um, I get to have six cars now where I only was worried about <laughs> one or two. Uh, motorcycles, I'm collecting motorcycles now because uh, they're, my wife can handle motorcycles over his cars. So it's, it's been a great lifestyle change for us. Um, we have, we've encountered great people, uh, all these people online with us today. Uh, it's been fantastic. So I don't know how to, Michael Huggins and I are winging this for the first one. So my suggestion is just get back in touch with the person who invited you to this and say, Hey, how do I get more information? I mean, we have property tours all the time on a weekly basis. We have introduction meetings, which actually explain the function behind um, how you become what we have fortunately become. Um, we have follow-up Q and A's that you can get on. Um, but uh, my suggestion is figure out what the person who invited you here, what their intentions are with you and, and how to help you out. Cause they know you better than we do. We're just trying to give you our stories from when, when we got involved. It was, thank God my wife was right. She dragged me down that meeting. I was a Neanderthal. Uh, today I'm just, I'm just a Neanderthal with a lot more time. Good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're really great at starting meetings. We're yes. really great at running meetings. Um, but as far as like ending them, we don't really look at this as like an ending. This is definitely a beginning for a lot of you. And so we want to encourage you to get more information. One thing we're doing this weekend as an entire nationwide team is a big intensive on fix and flips. How to find properties, how to source them, how to raise the capital on it, how to organize the project, how to make sure to run the numbers. The instructor who's doing it has been doing a fix and flip every three days for the last 10 years. Every three and days. She's a woman, and she's a woman. So yep. get all the ladies on because, you know, it's, it's a woman's world now. That's right. She, uh, she just also got um, 2018 Residential Builder of the Year Award in her area of the country. Uh, she's doing a lot of great things. So it is by invitation only. So you do need the private link in order to join. And we'd love to have all of you there. You can hear more about how you can go from where you're at to where you want to be, whether that's be more in control of your time and your finances or be surrounded by people who you care about and care about you. There's, there's some magic happening in this organization. So we want to welcome you. All right, guys. And listen, for everybody else that's on the line, if for some reason you thought this, this might have been, been something you want somebody else to hear. Tomorrow, we're going to feature two more, uh, two more uh, individuals, that, and then Wednesday, and then Thursday, and then and Friday. We're going to do this every day, just so that you guys can get uh, folks in your life um, to maybe hear stories of the start to finish kind of idea. And don't get me wrong, there's work involved, but uh, it's a lot. It's, that, that's not a four-letter word when you're hanging out with this group. It's a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun. We've turned work into fun, so it's great. Right. All right, folks, we'll bring some friends tomorrow. We'll see you this weekend for the workshop and then get back with whoever invited you here so you can be a part of the house tours and the other intro sessions that we have for you. And awesome blossom. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks for all this. Thanks, Skylar. You did great. Bye, everyone. <laughs>